I normally drive to Buwindi from Kampala and for the first 300 to 350 kilometers it's a tarmac road and um, from that point onwards it's uh, a Murram road which is generally quite good but there are several sections of it which are quite rocky and bumpy and during the rainy season you have to be careful and engage the vehicle in four-wheel drive just in case you get stuck. The Indian Peninsula National Park is one of two places where you find the mountain gorilla. The other place is the Virunga volcano region, about 30 kilometers south of here. Apart from being one of the last remaining habitats for the mountain gorilla, there are several other endemic species which are only found in this part of Africa. Due to the conflicts in the region, there have been mass population movements, particularly in the mid-90s, when a lot of people left Rwanda and became refugees in the Democratic Republic of Congo. And this influx of people put pressure onto the protected area. They needed wood for fuel. And what they ended up doing was going into the forest to get that wood. Um, I want to go to park headquarters. Okay, thank you. The Worldwide Fund for Nature worked with other partners in the region to try and rehabilitate the areas that had been encroached on. They went in and they cleaned up the traps and snares and took out rubbish. The conflicts in the region make conservation work difficult. There have been increased poaching or increased encroachment on the protected areas because there isn't the presence of the park staff. I really enjoy coming down to the forests and seeing the gorillas. I particularly enjoy trekking, not just because you get to see the mountain gorillas, but also because you are in the forest. There are other primates here, there's loads and loads of birds, and it's just a very nice place to be. You have to be reasonably fit to go gorilla trekking. Buindi isn't called impenetrable for no reason. It is a very thick forest and very, very hilly. Have they found other nests? No. But the tree of yesterday is coming. Oh, it's coming. Oh, so you're just making sure it isn't the H group nests. What happens is you will go to the point that they were seen at the day before. And from that point on, the trackers will be tracking the gorillas, following the fresh trails. I'm actually standing in a nest right now. They make new nests every night. They, don't, they, won't, they generally don't come back to the same nest. And it's, they just flatten down the leaves and lay down them. Once you approach the gorillas, the guides will tell you to keep your voices down, and then the guides will lead you to where the gorillas are. Gorillas are generally very calm animals and they seem to not be bothered by our presence. And you'll generally find them eating. The juveniles tend to frolic around and play with each other. When I first saw the gorilla, I think one of the first things that struck me was how large the silverback is. I don't think I was expecting to see such a large animal. The other thing that struck me was just how incredibly calm they are. It's very peaceful to spend time with gorillas. It's not to say that they don't get aggressive and they don't make a lot of noise. That isn't the case. But generally you'll find that they're very calm and very peaceful, just eating and uh, just, just, you know, just at peace really. The goal for the International Gorilla Conservation Programme is the conservation of the mountain gorilla. Therefore, 
we try and work towards the conservation of these forests that contain the mountain gorillas. There are several threats to the habitat of the mountain gorillas. The biggest threat is probably the pressure of the local population. This forest is essentially an island in a sea of cultivation. There are over 100,000 people that surround this forest. And it is due to this encroachment that we are now left with this small forest. Buwindi was made a national park in 1991. The local communities resented the fact they were not allowed to have any access to it. In order to try and offset the cost that these communities had paid by losing access to the resources, several areas around, along the edge of the park were designated multiple use areas. And it's from these areas that certain members of the local communities can come and collect in resources that they had done in the past. If local communities derive benefits from the park, then they're less likely to want to cut down trees or poach the animals. It has taken many years and a lot of work to change those attitudes. But now a lot of the people around the park appreciate and recognize the benefits of maintaining it as a forest. It's always very nice to come down to the field and meet with the park staff and discuss whatever issues or challenges that we need to both work on. And it is such a pleasant surrounding. I always get a lot out of coming down to the parks and trying to tackle some of these things. I would like to see Burundi continuing to be an important conservation site. I think that currently the work done by the Worldwide Fund for Nature to protect this park is very good. And I would like to continue seeing that being done. We cannot underestimate the importance of conserving this forest. And any efforts made are definitely worth it. <laughs>